Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Interconnect 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, IBM. Grado here and I'm at IBM Interconnect in Las Vegas, Nevada, and you're watching the Cube on the ground. I'm here with Tim Moran. You got it. And he is one of the VIP influencers here in at IBM Interconnect. So can you tell me a little bit about yourself, Tim, and what sure. you're doing, how you became a VIP influencer? Um, I guess I just stumbled into it really. <laughs> um, I'm a software developer by trade and I did, you know, all that coding stuff for ten years before I realized I wanted to get out from behind the computer for a little while. So um, I'm now the director of digital sales for one of them, for uh, Tribune Media Group. And it's just a completely different world. Oh, so I was invited to this basically um, through Twitter. I was really excited about the Watson Analytics package that was released around October last year. And I had tweeted a few articles and then IBM had taken some note. And the conversation just really went well because I liked how they were so progressive and I liked how they were a company that really values the voice of people that aren't, you know, they're paid customers and they're not paid sponsors or advertisers, that kind of a thing, so. Yeah, definitely. So you mentioned Tribune Media, mm -hmm. is that correct? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me more about that, what you do with them? Sure, so Tribune Media is um, a company that owns 59-ish uh, television stations and with those television stations comes a lot of digital opportunities, so. Across about 75% of the country, we have markets that will basically take these news and information websites and you know give the local audiences information that affects them in their daily lives. So through those platforms, they produce upwards of two to three hundred million page views on a monthly basis, um, produced by multiple tens of millions of unique visitors. So you know it's a voice, and what we do with that voice is we work to. Um, help advertisers and help sponsors to um, you know talk about themselves and talk about how they can help our audiences without being intrusive to our audiences so it needs to make sense from both angles because you know if the advertiser voice is too loud and too intrusive then that's going to really upset our um, just natural news viewers and we just don't want that to happen mm -hmm. yeah. so we really see social media integrating on television in general what are some ways that you see this transition happening and where do you see social media interacting with with television and entertainment world in general? It's it's, it's such a big topic. Um, social media, it's it's giving the audiences a voice, mm -hmm. you know, so anybody who might be, you know, watching Shark Tank, for example, we had the sharks here yesterday afternoon and, um, you know, they can comment and they can engage in social conversation along with um, either locally produced programming or network programming in a way that they weren't able to previously. So, you know, they can engage in this conversation and then, depending on how loud that conversation is, potentially affect the brand, really. Because if we're listening, and we should be listening, then we need to understand what they're liking and what they're not liking and pivot according to that. So that's an interesting topic. How do you see social media create, helping to create a brand and send a message out um, in general? Mm -hmm. well, I think everybody's actually a brand on social <laughs> media. I mean, you're a brand, um, I'm a brand, and that's not you know, something that's conceded, it's just fact. You know, we all have our, our own online persona. So social media in terms of big brand is helping to connect them directly to consumers um, or customers in ways that were previously not possible. And actually, I think it's good because in a modern, agile environment, um, consumer environment, uh, whatever the case might be, these companies need to be listening because there are so many disruptions happening across every industry just about on a daily basis that if you're the entrenched player and you're not pivoting and adjusting and growing with what your, um, your, your core clientele wants, then there's somebody else probably waiting next to you that's mm -hmm. gonna do it, so. Yeah, and what are some of the biggest distractions on social media? Dog and cat videos. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst. <laughs> yeah, I just waste my time now. The, and there's still a lot of spam in social media. You have to uh, see through the noise. Um, there's people that are 
self-promoting, just to be, you know, self-promotional, if you will. So, I mean, there's constructive and there's good social noise. Um, and then there's negative social noise that we're all aware of. But then again, too, that negative social noise can also figure into, um, you know, feedback for a product. Like, for example, we were looking at the um, IBM Social Analytics package earlier today. And what the IBM Social Analytics package does um, in nearly real time, you know, with maybe just about a 20 minute or so lag in data, depending on how quick the, quickly the, uh, the data collection happens, um, these big brands, uh, whether they be grocery store chains, which was the sample that we saw today, like for example, grocery store chains, they could see what the public sentiment is across any number of social platforms, whether it be Twitter, Facebook, but then don't forget, social platforms are also, um, you know, review websites, couponing websites, um, travel websites and things like that. So it aggregates all of that data. It uses some natural language processing to understand what the sentiment is mm -hmm. that's being you know, put forth by the public for those brands. Mm -hmm. And then it really helps you to drill down into the different areas. Like you can drill right down into Twitter and see literally what people are saying and they color code red for not good and blue for, I'm sorry, green for good. And hopefully that can help you to adjust whatever people don't like. Sounds like a great product. It is. Awesome. Yeah, it's cool. So we really see this hashtag uh, revolution kind of creating a conversation, getting rid of a lot of the noise. Mm -hmm. And I see hashtags everywhere along with join the conversation. How do you think hashtags are benefiting or a beneficial thing for Twitter and Facebook? Mm -hmm. And can you talk a little bit about that subject? Sure. Um, I think it's a great way to anchor this conversation. Mm -hmm. So um, hashtags, for example, they're tying this conference together. Um, yeah. You're either going to tweet uh, hashtag IBM interconnect or you're going to tweet a uh, new way to work or any number of other hashtags um, so then people that are here and they're looking for that social conversation they can use that as the anchor through which they can you know listen to people that they don't know they're not their friends but they can see this in their social streams but then it also helps I think people that aren't here you know maybe they couldn't make the trip um, to be able to listen in from wherever they are in the world so I think hashtags are great, and I think that until there's a better way to come up with something that's a unique anchor and identifier for individual topics in a social mm -hmm. setting, um, hashtags gotta be it. Yeah, and also it's a great way to get the back-end data on a, mm -hmm. a topic and um, everything like that. Until my awesome. mom goes and wants to figure out what a hashtag is, and she's <laughs> like, what's that little pound sign right there, and how do I do that? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a new, it's a new thing. Yeah. We're all getting on board as well. The newfangled thing. Yeah. So what are some trends, some other trends that you're seeing in social media in 2015? There's going to be more of it. The platforms are changing. Um, Instagram is huge right now for interaction. Um, you know, Facebook is always extremely dominant. Um, I mean, it, what's new in 2015 is just that there's so many new voices. You know, whether it be the Snapchats of the world or the next thing that, you know, the kids these days are <laughs> grabbing onto that we won't find out about until it's not cool anymore. Um, there's always something new and it's my opinion that as a business or a company or whatever the case might be it's so easy to get lost in trying to be all things to all people that you really need to focus on doing a few things really well because if you dilute your attention to too many different you know areas mm -hmm. you're not going to do anything well awesome well great advice any any last minute tips for people that are getting that are new to social media and just trying to build their followers and build their brand? Um, there's a lot of great social media people here this week. And I always try to listen to other people that are smarter than me, which is just <laughs> about everybody. So uh, I like to learn from people. And um, one of the main takeaways that I picked up on is uh, be yourself and be authentic and use your own voice. Don't try to be something that you're not because people could see through that really quickly. And whatever you find passionate in, in your daily life, Put that on social media because chances are there are people that you know might think that your point of view is really cool and really interesting and might think that there's some benefit to it so awesome well thank you so much it was great, great talking to you tim and i'm ariana grado and you're watching the cube